Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion was announced as a remastered title by Square Enix on June 16, 2022. Crisis Core originally was released on the PSP back in 2007 as a prequel title for the franchise, showing Zack Fair as the protagonist of Crisis Core and showcasing all the events, the build-up right before Final Fantasy VII. Although this remastered is a one-to-one -one remake of the original, there are plenty of things to look into and experience something new in this game. This critique will discuss spoilers of the story and gameplay, so be aware. Even though this is the section I'll be talking about its story, I want everyone to know as well that I will even be talking about how the dialogue is, with it being written and voiced. I particularly don't discuss the script, but since this is supposedly be the game that people are supposed to play and be up to date ever since the FF7 remake was released, there will be slight comparisons of the two in terms of quality, when it's story, and how it was executed. As I mentioned earlier, this is a one-to-one -one remake of the original, so the developers didn't really do much with story or rewrite any of the voice lines other than change up the graphics and the old combat system. This consistently damages how the game is presented. I personally put the FF7 remake as one of the most unique and best written narratives to experience for modern day JRPGs. And to be set back with how Crisis Core Reunion is, it's a bit of a bummer considering Crisis Core has great concepts showcasing the buildup of FF7. It is definitely weird how it is handled because they put a lot of work into this game to only show so little in the story. You could see how the voice lines, the pacing of the story, and how it is structured isn't the best and would need a lot of polishing. Considering how newer players are coming from the FF7 remake, they would be very curious and be interested in how this game is, since it is well connected to Final Fantasy VII. I can only imagine how they would think of this remaster since it is a whole left turn with how the writing and dialogue is. Again, it's incredibly weird of how this is handled because this really feels like a whole new game. But at the same time, not much work has been put into the narrative to make it much more digestible as we progress throughout the game. A lot of its dialogue is very awkward along with how the animations are in the cutscenes. An airstrike has been called. Are you sure nobody is at Angeal's house? Huh. Angeal's house! Hurry! It is very far from how the FF7 remake presented itself, and I do understand that they needed to put this out immediately before FF7 Rebirth comes out. The thing is, I just really wanted for this whole game and the story is to at least rewrite how some voice lines are for its dialogue, since restructuring the story will basically change up how the foundation of the game is and knowing Square, they wouldn't do that since they wouldn't have enough time to literally change the whole thing. I found myself having a difficult time sitting down and watching the cutscenes because of how it was written out. I honestly just wanted to hop back into gameplay and just keep playing. Every time the characters kept talking, I just felt less interested in some parts. Don't get me wrong, there are clearly moments in the game where I really felt the emotion in these scenes. But I also couldn't help but think that Square had this opportunity to make the prequel much better than its original. There are so many small things in the game that just threw me off and made me think hard about the story. It involves the timing of things. You could be doing side missions that have a bit of a story in them while you are in the middle of the main story where a lot of things are happening currently. It ruins the sense of immersion within the moment of what the main story is telling you, since they give an option for leaving the main story to do a side mission. Another is when they show random flashbacks from the DMW. DMW is the digital mind wave, which is a little roulette or slot machine in the upper right corner of your screen that gives buffs, limits, and other gameplay mechanics during your in-game combat. When the DMW rolls to certain characters, sometimes you'll see these memories of that certain character of what Zack has of them. I thought this was a cool way to introduce additional lore or character development. But when I found out that you could easily miss a lot of them, it just leaves out the experience for people who may miss it on their first playthrough. I much prefer them to put it during the main story missions or at least some of the important side missions. It also goes back to my criticism of the timing and immersion of how the story is presented to us since these memories or flashbacks of Zack happen throughout what you progress in the story, which you end up thinking or assuming when this memory has happened. It just gives much more confusion than giving a unique approach to it. 
I once also mentioned this before we get right on to the next topic is that some story bits just felt that there wasn't much continuity with the new exclusive characters in Crisis Core comparing it to the original FF7 storyline you know and these characters involving Cisne, Genesis and even a teaser near the end of the game where it showed or hinted the deep ground characters such as Weiss and Nero. Since this is a prequel, where where did they all go around the original story of FF7? They just suddenly disappear or were never talked about in the OG or even in Advent Children's movie. At least it seems for the FF7 remake that they are slowly introducing these characters like Weiss and Nero, but I really do hope to see the other characters that were shown in this whole FF7 compilation within these remake titles because I actually do believe there can be interesting stories involving them, or at least they can be great additions to the cast. Now, let's go back and talk on how the voice acting is. The original Crisis Core was infamously known to have awkward dialogue throughout the game. To me, that is given. Voice acting, written scenarios were a bit weird in the 2000s compared to how it is in today's gaming. Gaming has changed and evolved a lot when it comes down to their storytelling and it's why I really wanted a much more proper remake for Crisis Core. This game was just being handled in an odd way. They even decided to bring back many of the cast from the FF7 remake. In my opinion, they perform amazingly in their roles in that game. So for them to bring in great actors to a game like this where the voice lines weren't bothered to be changed one bit really frustrates me because of the talent the actors have and it is not being utilized one bit due to the awkward voice lines given to them. I understand the situation Square Enix is in and the game development takes a lot of time. I really think the best way to handle this whole situation was to really change up the voice lines in the game. Of course, not so much since the game was made from the original and it wouldn't necessarily align with the newly written ones, but there are ways to work around it and simply create better lines. I've seen other people's criticisms about Zack's new voice actor since this game did change up their whole cast. I wasn't as used to it at first, but over time the voice grew on me and the actor really does embody the cheerful, positive hero Zack is. So by the end of it, I found no problems at all and I also really do enjoy all the other new actors who have voiced the characters who were exclusively in Crisis Core. Although some moments of the story were tough to just watch, I still enjoyed how the game is since I was able to understand the themes, the messages of how these scenes were. What was very impressive about this remaster is that they really changed up the whole game with its graphics and sound, reusing the assets from the FF7 remake. There was no graphics mode at all and just defaulted you on playing 60 FPS on Xbox and PlayStation. Although the graphics and art style is identical to the FF7 remake, the graphics with certain textures and shadows are not as similar and is a bit of a downgrade compared to the remake. Also not many sound options are available and pretty much the same as the FF7 remake sound options. But the soundtrack, just like always with any Final Fantasy game, is really great. Overall, it is still a solid remaster as the devs utilize the Unreal Engine 4 and is a humongous change compared to the original. <laughs>
また一つ貸しだ I'll take care of Angeal You should go and hide somewhere Don't be concerned Genesis cannot harm me Hmm If there were one thing that made this game worth the $50 and was something to really be into, it would be the combat. Square Enix revamped the whole combat system while still managing to have the same gameplay and level design of the original. How they approached it, it was very similar to how Near Replicant is, where it's still a one-to-one -one remake of the original but has a whole new combat system. Crisis Core Reunion's gameplay also gives much continuity from the FF7 remake, allowing newer players who came from there to be a bit familiar with the combat. It's identical to the FF7 remake's in-game combat, but it plays completely differently. It still manages to give the same feeling of the action and turn-based genre mashed into one, like the remake, but Crisis Core Reunion's depth of gameplay is much more simplified. I personally did not find this an issue at all since there was still complexity offered to it. The variety of builds you are able to make within the game was always as satisfying just as you were hacking and slashing away enemies. It really gave a whole true JRPG feeling where there was always a sense of progression of completing missions, earning rewards, leveling up materia, and introducing much more mechanics throughout the game. I was very surprised the game kept adding more mechanics as we progressed through the game, like having materia fusion, being able to meld many more new commands, and having a whole new proficiency system with the Buster Sword. The game just always felt like there was always something to work on and kept the player engaged. After completing the story of Crisis Core Reunion, they offered a new game plus which makes you play the game again, with the current equipment, materia, and DMW progressions you have built on from your last save. This is actually a bit of a problem with this game, especially if you're trying to 100% the game for its trophies. Going to New Game Plus, since it resets all the side missions that you have taken a lot of time to work on and you basically have to almost play through the whole game to get back your DMW limits or summons, this also applies on getting back the Buster Sword since you don't have it until halfway through the game. It would have been much more convenient to have these things when starting New Game Plus, just like how it was with the FS7 Remake, allowing you to use any weapon in the beginning of the game along with having a chapter selection to do certain missions, which again, Crisis Core Reunion does not have. Another big problem is the Buster Sword proficiency leveling system. Overall, the grind in the game is just very tedious, especially when trying to raise the proficiency of the Buster Sword. It takes a lot of time to just raise it up to 1%. It's a necessity to grind out the Buster Sword proficiency since certain percentages give bonuses to Zack. Reaching 23% has a bonus of having a damage limit break which allows you to deal more than 9,999 damage with any attack or command materia when in a battle stance. Then reaching above 50% makes you have an ability called Barrier Piercing, which any attacks or materia abilities used in a battle stance will break through an enemy barrier, leaving them completely vulnerable to damage. Oddly enough, that is all the bonuses that you could get from the Buster Sword, and there is clearly no point in working towards a 100% proficiency level. The gameplay design was just straight up weird with how everything was handled to the grind of the game. I am quite aware that I said that many of the mechanics and how it was designed for this game keeps us engaged as a player in our first playthrough, but particularly the post-game of Crisis Core does the complete opposite of player engagement and just wants you to do it for the sake of it, making it unnecessarily somewhat of a never-ending experience. This leads on to the next topic, which is about difficulty for this game. I played on normal in my first playthrough and I really enjoyed playing on normal because of how well balanced the gameplay is. It was difficult enough where the game wasn't too easy. Personally playing on normal was already tough due to how some side missions really do require you to be much more prepared and tactical when approaching these battles. Since some missions you could be overwhelmed easily and die in one or two hits. I really did appreciate how that was handled rather than me going quickly with no thought and casually completing it. It really does give the true turn-based RPG approach, 
where if not prepared and not knowing weaknesses, you can be heavily punished compared to when having the knowledge, it becomes a walk in the park. As much as normal was really fun to play on, playing it on hard mode, especially if it's a first playthrough, is not exactly how I imagine it would be. I think hard mode in this game wasn't as well thought out to be, and it was just much more upscaling enemies that have more HP and do more damage to you, which most of the time they could be knocking you out in one or two hits frequently throughout the playthrough compared to normal. This starts to be really irritating, especially how fights can last very long, especially in boss fights. It would be much more comforting to be in long fights if the game did focus the combat on much more on the action portion. But since it's just the FF7 remake combining two genres of RPG and action, it is honestly tough to go through these fights, especially when your gear is not maxed out or don't have the certain gear just yet to combat certain enemies or bosses. Fortunately, there are ways to grind and earn gear by simply hopping into other missions not relating to the main story, but it goes back to the problem of how much time you'll be putting in to get the gear and just to take down one boss. It's why it would have been nice to have much more approach within the action portion of the game where we could still be able to manage the difficult or time consuming missions by relying on the physicality of the player as they perform more physical moves in the battlefield. Examples would be having a better dodge roll mechanic, actually having a parry system, things of that nature that would be able to combat the enemies even if you don't have the gear or may be under leveled. I do understand that this would actually change up the whole game and their design philosophy since it plays like a turn based RPG, but it's a big flaw of the game of how hard mode is made and not as balanced or even fun to play. What I found interesting with Crisis Core Reunion is how there's a bit of a semi free roaming happening later on in the game. It's how you venture and find new scenarios to interact with involving the story or teeny bits of lore for its world building. I had no idea Crisis Core had Midgar and Shinra's building as their main hub of the game and it was quite nice to explore and see a whole different perspective from these characters. Although it would have been nice to add a fast travel system to these different zones since they could take up a bit of time traveling from one place to another as you were completing a quest and such, the game in its entirety of its level design is incredibly linear due to the PSP not obviously able to run it as well back then. But it's important to note that Square worked on what they had and they were able to make it work. I also did enjoy how their quests were designed. I'm talking about the main stories to be exact on how they added additional optional objectives that could lead to slightly new scenarios or be given rewards when completed. There were gimmicky segments introduced that weren't the greatest but it was nice to experience something new. I just thought it was fair to experience since 80% of the game is doing side missions and experiencing the same combat. Again, on what Square did, props to them on what they had to do and make it work because I was very impressed about it. But again, what really just makes this whole game much more digestible is the gameplay. To be in it, into it for plenty of hours compared to the original where it just felt very jank and you just wanted the combat to be over with. In all honesty, the grind for the Platinum Trophy would have been fun if you didn't have to rely on RNG. One of the trophies require you to complete the DMW progress with each character or summon. Majority was relatively fast to complete since naturally you would complete them throughout the first or second playthrough, but certain ones just take forever to complete. My situation was worse since I've seen no progression at all for Cloud and Sephiroth, so I searched up my issue with this game and see if there were any other methods to complete my progression as soon as possible. Unfortunately, there wasn't anything other than having a materia that would raise up the probability of getting their limits, or their DMW. Although it did help a bit, it took many hours to raise it up. I did this method on what I've seen on YouTube where you can AFK farm the DMW progress. It was unfortunate I had to resort to it because there was just no way of manually progressing this DMW system since its whole system relies on RNG. I had no idea why this was an unlockable trophy or even a mechanic to begin with when the odds of you completing it is very small. There's a high reward or accessory locked behind it as well. You get one of the Genji gear if you 100% everything for the DMW progress. Also let me remind you that another trophy to unlock in order to get the Platinum Trophy is to obtain every Genji gear. So this Platinum Trophy just felt nearly impossible to get and it gets much worse when you have to deal with the secret final boss which is Minerva. Minerva, whether it is on hard mode or normal, 
She is just a complete damage sponge that can one shot you very easily. The fight was just not fun at all to do and the boss fight was very tedious since every move Minerva did can one shot you most of the time. If you didn't have the right gear or stats for this fight, it would have been nearly impossible to do. It took me some tries since I had to experiment what builds are reliable. I honestly wanted to just quit since this game took some time to 100% and how the odds were against me. I pushed through, fortunately, and was able to even understand the game much more. But I really wish this game was managed much differently in terms of balancing. The Platinum Trophy wasn't as difficult looking back at it, but there will be so much time invested to get these certain trophies which is the biggest theme of this critique, is the unnecessary grind. Despite how the game was made and was being handled, I still enjoyed the game to where I would come back and play it. I also really do appreciate Square Enix still took the time to almost remake the game in its entirety and redesign the combat system. What really just took me in this game particularly is how it just focuses on being a video game first, and the narrative is second, or more so it is a cherry on top to this game. I know this is a one to one remake from a game made in 2007. As someone who grew up with many games in the 2000s, what I really miss in modern gaming today is games being games. As unfortunate as it sounds, a lot of big games really just focus on the narrative along with its scenarios to tell their story rather than its gameplay mechanics. So playing Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion was very refreshing to play because the story didn't overstate her welcome, and just got straight to the point with her gameplay. It has this addicting combat and progression system I didn't expect to be synced into, but here we are grinding out for the Platinum Trophy and taking down difficult bosses along the way, which are fun to do and feel very satisfying once completed. I highly recommend this game to anyone who is looking into an action JRPG, especially if they are big fans of the Final Fantasy series, or even the new fans who came from the FF7 remake. The retail price of this game in the US is surprisingly not as expensive for what it is. It is still a bit expensive, but the $50 price range is worth the hours you may be putting in. I have over 40 plus hours of this game and honestly, it doesn't feel like I put in those hours at all, and that's mainly due to having fun with the game. Also, let me remind you that I completed the main story very quickly around the 15-20 hour mark in my first playthrough, so there is some post-game content to do that will occupy you for another 10 hours or so. I really do believe that this truly should have been remade. The concepts, the combat, and many other things that shine in this game weren't at its peak. And it's unfortunate because this is part of the famous Final Fantasy VII franchise. It really should have the same love as what the FF7 remake got, but it is still significantly better, beyond better than the original. Although it is a whole take or leave it situation, the game in the end has its charm. Protect your honor. As soldier! 